Hello once again, my name is Brother McGill, or Terry McGill, some call me, and uh, I'm back with another lesson. Oh, well, it's first of all, it's good to be back with another lesson, excuse me, of who is the spirit of truth. You know, I hear a lot of people talk about, uh, I, I want to watch with God's spirit of truth, I watch with God's spirit of truth, but, you know, some people don't know what they actually mean, but uh, uh, we're going to go over this lesson and try to, and through the word of God, and find out who is the spirit of truth. Before I begin, I'd like to open up with a word of prayer. I said thank you for those who tune in first, and those who watch this video. Let's go to your prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, we come to you, dear Lord. Thank you for all the things that you do for us, and so many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Thank you for working us up this morning. Give us air to breathe. We close our back and shoes upon our feet, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for all the things that you do for us. So sometimes we might not thank you for that, but we really thank you, dear Lord, for everything. So I pray for the lesson, dear Lord, as well. For those out there who are watching and those who are here, dear Lord, maybe it might touch their heart, dear Lord. And maybe they want to come to the knowledge of truth and they have it already before it ever left it too late because there's so much false teaching going on out here. Some people preach to to amuse others. Some people preach just to, to uh, just get more views on social media. Some people preach just to get wealth. A lot more of the things they do, Father God, but not the true men of your divine holy word. So we pray, Father God, that the less that uh, the people will hear, Father God, will touch their hearts, dear Lord. They have anything in their minds or in their hearts the way to keep them, dear Lord, will come to the knowledge of truth, will come to your word, but you move that neck me from them. When they stay fast, your word, grow your word, get to know you, dear Lord. And for those who don't know you, may they come and know you forever, less than too late. We just thank you for so much what you do for us, dear Lord. For we can never pay you back for the love that you have for us. But what you told us, Lord, in your, in your word, those who love me keeps my word. So, Father God, have us, dear Lord, to understand we've got to keep your word. We say that we love you. Father God, all these prayers I pray to you. And Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so many people out here who is not teaching the true meaning of God's word say any and everything to, to get you to follow them. In the book of Acts, Paul wrote about people trying to make disciples and pre that speak perverse things right? We're not the true meaning of God's word. That's why it's so important that we know the true meaning of God's word for ourselves, so that no one, not including me, deceive you for eternal, uh, for your eternal soul, because hell is not going to hell. And to me, that that scares me. That's not a joke, and that scares me just to think about this for eternity going to hell. Ooh, that's that to put that put. It, it, I mean, it, it, it sh give me shivers, right? To think that I could go to hell if I'm not obeying the gospel. Okay, God's word. I'm not. I'm not obeying the God's word. The God will be obedient to the faith. But let's find out what the spirit of truth is. So, brother, sister, if you can't see the board, I'm sorry, but I will say the uh, say it out loud. The verse, the chapters, and the verse, so you can write them down and study in your own convenience. But do study God's word. Don't let me or no one else deceive you. Recover your eternal soul. Let's begin. This last is called Who is the Spirit of Truth? And let's find out who the Spirit of Truth is and how the Holy Spirit is in his dwelling. Okay, turn with me to John. That's John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, 15 through 17. That is the Gospel of John, chapter 14, 15 through 17. That's the Gospel of John. Chapter 15 through 17. And it reads, Jesus Christ says this, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Which we know the comforter, in verse 26, has the comforter is a uh, uh, Holy Ghost. He said, uh, he, uh, he said I, and I will pray to, verse 16 again, I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, 
that he may abide with you forever. I mean forever. Mm. Even the spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive, because it's seen him not, neither, neither knowing him, but ye know him, for he dwell with you, dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So what's going to dwell with us? The spirit of truth. That's, that's what's going to dwell with us, the spirit of truth. Now, uh, and he, the spirit of truth, going to dwell with you. You're going to know him because he's going to dwell with you. This is the dwelling spirit, the Holy Spirit. It is dwelling spirit. There's only one spirit. I'm going to show you that. We get to uh, down to uh, verse five, but this is a dwelling spirit going to dwell with you. And let's find out what the spirit is. Look at me. Uh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Turn, uh, turn me to John chapter four, twenty-three to twenty-four. That's Gospel of John chapter four, twenty-three. Through 24. And who is that? And who is a spirit? I said, Gospel of John, chapter 4, 23 to 24. Same time, I'm not going to read all this, but this is what Jesus was talking to the lady at the well. So I implore you to go back and read it. Uh, start at verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1. All the way to where I'm about to st uh, uh, stop at, but but at the same time we we'll read this first uh, the couple of verses right here, this verse right here, so we know who the spirit uh, who the spirit is. And uh, Gospel of John chapter four verse uh, twenty three twenty four reads, "But the hour is coming, and now when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father." Seeking such to worship him. Verse 24. Listen closely. Jesus says this word. Jesus uh, said this. God is a spirit. Who's the spirit? God's the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God said, We are the children. That's why it's a capital, I mean, it's a small uh, S. And God is our Father. And we got to worship Him in spirit. That's why Jesus Christ said the words that I speak, I'm going to have it up here, but Jesus Christ said that, uh, Gospel of John, chapter 62 to 63, God is a spirit. I mean, He said, uh, excuse me, He said the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. That's how we worship God by His word. But, uh, uh, Jesus Christ says that, not me. That is uh, Gospel of John, chapter 62 to 63. Uh, that the word, the spirit, and this life. But right here, it tells us God is a spirit. Jesus Christ tells us God is a spirit. Who's the spirit? God's the spirit. Okay. Look at Matthew. I mean, look at, uh, uh, now we'll find what the truth is. Look at John, Gospel of John 17, 17. Gospel of John 17, 17. Jesus Christ was praying to, the, uh, to uh, our Father for the disciples. Gospel of John 17, 17. That is Gospel of John chapter 17, 17. And uh, we, Jesus Christ said, it sanctified them. Through thy truth. The word is truth. So we know God is a spirit and the word is the truth. What shall dwell with us? The spirit of truth. So what's the spirit? God. What's the truth? The word. Okay. Look at uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 4. That is Matthew chapter 4. One through four. That is Book of Matthew, chapter four. One through four. And Jesus Christ, he was talking to uh, the tempter, the deceiver, Satan, and he read and he said to him, "This is uh, Matthew chapter four, one through four. 
they were Jesus and Andrew Reed. They were Jesus led, led up to the uh, up the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards at hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Okay, what is the truth? The word. Who is the spirit? God is the spirit. So, if you live by every word out the mouth of God, and you in that word, and you, and you stand in his word, and, and, and the, the New Testament, never over in the Old Testament, G. Christ brought the New Testament, and the Spirit is in the New Testament. The book uh, uh, Corinthians tells us, if you in that word, live by every word out the mouth of God, God is the Spirit, and the truth is the word. That's the dwelling Spirit inside of us. It dwells in you. And also the Holy Spirit, I'm sure that. But it dwells in you. That's why we got to live by every word out the mouth of God. That's why uh, uh, we started number one. What dwells with you? The spirit of truth. Who is the spirit? We know God is the spirit. Uh, John 17, 17, what's the truth? The word. How are we supposed to live by every word out the mouth of God? What's the truth? The word. Who's the spirit of God? So if we live by every word right here out the mouth of God, Spirit of truth dwells in you. So many people say so many different things, how the Spirit is in them. The Holy Spirit is in them. Uh, or how, how they worship God's Spirit and truth. You worship God's Spirit and truth only by the Word of God. It says it right, we probably live by, Jesus Christ said we probably live by every word out of the mouth of God. That's how we worship God's Spirit and, and truth. God is our Father. We are the children, babes in Christ. And that's how we worship God in spirit and the truth. But so many people say so many different things I see on social media or I have been in some churches and I say like, whoa, <laughs> they have not followed God at all. And so many people, Jesus Christ said uh, back in Matthew, I think it was in Matthew, that it would be a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth. As I stay and grow in God's word, I can see the reason why. And I look at the churches or the or platform or social media, I see all this all this false teaching going on, and they not follow the word of God. Now I can see Jesus Christ said, Come judge them, there will be a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now I can see that. At the first I could because I wasn't in the word of God. Now I can see that. Okay. But that's how the the, the the spirit of truth is in you. God is the spirit, the truth is the word. Okay, let me show you this. For those who don't know this, go to me. So you so you'll know this. Go to me to Ephesians chapter four, verse four. Ephesians chapter four and verse four. Ephesians chapter four and verse four. That in the book of Ephesians chapter four and verse four. And it reads. There is one body, which is the church. Jesus Christ, book of Matthew, he built the church. The book of Acts tells us he has to say to his church. <laughs> there is one body, which is the church. He was sure to teach this wrongly. There is one body, which is the church. God built the church. Book of Matthew, he built the church. And book of Acts tells us he had to say to the church, one spirit. Ha, one spirit. Who is the spirit? God is the spirit. I don't know why people say, <laughs> I got the spirit, I got the spirit, I got the spirit, I got so different spirit. You might have the spirit of the devil, but you want the spirit of God, it's only one God. That's what that means, one God. It's only one spirit. So how are we going to have the spirit in me? By the word of God, dwelling in me. The spirit of truth, which the truth is the word, and dwells in you. Because Jesus Christ is the word of God in the flesh. John chapter a gospel job to the 1 1 through 14. He's the word of God in flesh. And he came by truth and grace. Grace and truth. That's what it says in the Bible. I think that's verse 15 or 17. Uh, 
Gospel of John chapter 1 through 17 clearly tells us that. It came out grace and truth. But it's only one spirit. Don't get don't confuse. I, I wanted people with love from my heart. If you're in a church and they're not telling you, stay in the word of God so you know the truth for yourself, you could be deceived. Because any preacher who, who, who teaches the word of God, I promise teaching God's word is going to tell you, stay in the word of God. So you'll know the truth because he knows what saved you. you got to grow in the word of God. You have to. And let no way, nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody say you say like they told me years ago that I'm saved, but I'm still living for Satan. Soon I walk out of the church, I'm still back living for Satan. Don't let nobody deceive you like that. Till I came to this, is what changed me right here, the word of God. So don't be deceived. But, I'm sorry, but once again, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, there is one body, which is a church, one spirit, which is God, even as you are called, you are called by the gospel, in the uh, book of Thessalonians, you're called, or uh, second Thessalonians, you're called by the gospel, into one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, only one faith, which is the word of God. You know, I, don't be deceived, just follow scriptures. When it comes to your eternal soul, you can't, it, it's no room for error. It's no room for error. You got to know how you are, uh, how, like, like Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, you got to know how Christ is in you. You got to know that. If you don't know, you think Christ is in you, you know the way, but by the word of God, follow the word of God, then trust me, that Christ is the word of God. You ain't following God. You, you get deceived. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to uh, uh, say nothing to to, to to make people offend people. Nothing like that. That is not being all. But I'm warning you. I'm urging you. Come to the knowledge of truth of God's word. Don't get deceived in churches. I have been a lot of church before, and I was being deceived. I'm a prime example for that, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I was being deceived, but now God, through His, uh, through the gospel of grace. Like I said, but actually, the grace of God, the gospel of the grace of God, he had turned my whole life around. And I know how Christ is in me. Then you know how you are saved. You believe only by the word of God. Okay. Remember, there's only one, uh, one, uh, one spirit, one body, one faith, one baptism. Look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh, I'm sorry. 1 John chapter 5, 5 through 8. First John, me, uh, first John, chapter five, it's seventh through eight. I put that wrong, seventh through eight. That first uh, John, chapter five, seventh through eight. I knew something was wrong. That's first John, chapter five. 7 through 8. And that's 1 John chapter 5, 7 through 8. Like I say again, I make mistakes too. Only human, I make mistakes. Why well, you got to know the word of God for yourself. And remember, God wrote the Bible. He just used man to do it through the Holy Ghost. He used, used, uh, used man to do it. Acts chapter 1, 1 through 2. Just read that. He gave the those commandments through the Holy Ghost. It clearly tells us that. That's Acts chapter 1 through 2, King James Version. Okay, Bible. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, 7 through 8, and it tells us, for there, man, that, that's sort of verse 6. Uh, uh, 1 John chapter 5, 6 through 8. 1 John chapter 5, 6 through 8. This is he that came by water and blood, which is Jesus Christ. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bear witness because the spirit is truth. Okay. You know. You know what God is in you. And God give you that Holy Spirit inside of you. The spirit of truth right here. You know that Jesus Christ walked in faith. Like at first, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't believe. I just believed. Oh, God, he real. I mean, somebody had to do all that. But I didn't know him. I just thought, well, God is real. 
God. So I got it here, right here, the Word of God. And I know that dwelling spirit inside of you, the spirit of truth, the Word of God, you live by everything, I, I, everything I'm supposed to live by, Jesus Christ, he's supposed to live by every word of the mouth of God. Now I know that God dwells in me by the Word of God. Uh, that's why you know. Now keep on reading. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. It's, and it's the spirit that bear with him, because the spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and three, three on one. Good for a second. Oh, got to shut the door. Okay. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, which is God. The Word, which is the Son. Okay, in the beginning was the Word, the Word, with God, was God, John, Gospel John to the 1 1. The Father, the Word, which is the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And, it, and these three are one. So if I let that Colossians 3 16 tell us, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, dwell in you, I have uh, uh, the Spirit of uh, God. It's the spirit, the Father, which is God. He's a spirit. The word in me it is the truth. He's a Christ God. He's the truth. He's the word of God. Like so we are little children, and that's the Father and the Holy Ghost in me. And the Holy Ghost teaches me the spirit of God's word. That's the, he can even give you the spirit of truth. The Holy Ghost. He can, you hear the word of God. They're all three at once. You got the word in you. You got all three of them in you. All three Godhead is in you. And that's how that's how God is in you. The, the Spirit is in you. God is in everyone. I'm talking about the Spirit is in everyone. How, you want Christ in you. God, Christ, His Son in you. Like it says in the Bible, He brought us the Word. We gotta obey the Word. Once again, for there are three that bear a record in heaven: the Father. The Word, the Holy Ghost, and the 301. So, cops just to tell you, and like I go to uh, uh, McDonald's somewhere, you know, I like I like onions, you know, on my burger and cheese. And I put all that on my burger and mayonnaise, and I eat that. I have all that inside of me. So, Jesus Christ said, words of spirit, they are life. So, I have that Word in me, I have all three of them in me. And that's the dwelling spirit. Okay. Verse uh, 8. And, and, uh, and there are three that bear uh, witness in earth, the spirit, and we are, we are, we are the children, and the water and blood. We know Jesus Christ came by water and blood, and these three agree in one. And what another? There are three that bear witness in earth, earth, the spirit. Remember, Jesus Christ uh, said the words of spirit, and they are life, and water and blood. And they agree. What well, Jesus Christ clearly tells us that these words are spirit. And it's life. When you let the word of Christ dwell in you, let this what spirit dwell in you. And we, that's how we are all babes and little children in God. And God, capital S, is the Father. Okay. Now, since so we close by here, uh, Jude, and I'm sure I have the Holy Spirit in you real fast. Look at Jude, Jude chapter 1, 17 through 20. That is Jude, book of Jude. Right by uh, 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 at the uh, first, third job. Jude chapter uh, 17 through 20. That Jude chapter 1, 17 through that's right, 20. That Jude chapter 1, 17 through 20. That Jude. Chapter 1, 17 through 20. And it reads, But beloved members, ye the, uh, beloved, but, excuse me, but beloved, remember ye the word which was spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there shall be walkers in the last time, who shall walk after their own godly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensually, having not 
the spirit. I mean, they don't have a, they don't have the spirit in them, the spirit of truth in them. That's why I separate. They said, "Why you have evil, so much evil out here?" And because people do not have the uh, Holy Spirit in them. Okay. Everybody said, "I got the Holy Spirit in me." Everybody, everybody said, "I got the Holy Spirit in me." I'm showing you. Everybody got God in me. I'm talking about not having the Spirit in them. The God's great of us all. Okay. Verse twenty. But ye be loved, building up yourself on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay, let me break this down to you real fast. But, be, but ye be loved, build up yourself on the most holy faith. Romans 10, 17. That is Romans 10, 7, uh, 10, 17. As Romans 10, 17 clearly tells us, clearly, that uh, faith can by hearing the word of God. That faith could by hearing the word of God. So what's the faith? The word of God. Okay. And build up yourself on the most holy faith. The holy faith? What's holy? The faith. And it's the word of God. And also the truth, which is it's, 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 it's the grace too, but it's a different lesson. It's also the truth, the faith, the word is holy. So if I have uh, the faith in me, which is the word, it's the truth. And it's holy. So I have the spirit of truth in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. That's how the Holy Spirit, and it dwell, it's a dwell, it's a dwell with you. And it dwells with you. You understand that? And it dwells with you. And it dwells with you. And it dwells with you. If I have that truth, the faith, the truth, and the and truth also is a faith, faith of my hearing, the word of God. And the word is what holy. That's how we still go back up to uh, number one, John 40, 15, 17. That's how the spirit truth, he dwells with you. That's how the Holy Spirit dwells with you. It's only one spirit, and it dwells with you, the Holy Spirit. If you live by every word out the mouth of God, like Jesus Christ said, that's how the Holy Spirit is in you. That's how he dwells. That's how he dwells the spirit in you. If you want to turn the light, you got you got to be the word of God. Got to grow and be patient. Don't think as I'm reading the word today, I got the Holy Spirit in me. No. You gotta obey this. You gotta obey this. You gotta obey, be obedient to the faith. You gotta obey this. Confess your sins. A lot of confess your sin and so follow the God by the word. If you really want to turn life like I want in eternal life, you gotta do a lot of things. You gotta Things in here is not like Jesus Christ said. Um, John wrote his, his words. Not I mean his commandments are not grievous. It's not hard. If you want to turn to life. First Thessalonians two thirteen. And it closes. First Thessalonians two thirteen. I know I keep saying I say this a lot. I sound like a broken record, but I put stuff up here because I want those who are listening or those who just drew in to hear it for themselves. Because some people, I mean, I see a lot, I mean, a lot, a lot of stuff on the internet that's not teaching the word of God at all. And people flock to that. So I don't need a big audience or nothing like that. I don't want people come to the knowledge of truth. This is your eternal soul. I'm speaking the truth in love, like I said, in the book of Ephesians 13 through 15. Ephesians chapter, uh, I think it's 4, 13 through uh, 17. I'm, I'm not mistaken. Ephesians chapter 4, 13 through 15. No, 13 through 15. I'm speaking the truth in love. Because there's so many people out here are deceiving people with false teaching each and every day. I see that on, I mean, I see on my internet, I'll be on the internet, I'm like, whoa, I cannot believe this. Okay. Well, first, that's Lord at 2.13. So I am coming to you, brothers, when I know you're not in love. That first, that's the Lord at 2.13. First Thessalonians two thirteen. First Thessalonians two thirteen. Now I got it. And it reads first let him know it two verse thirteen. For this cause also thank we God without season. Season. I'm not gonna get that from that that would mess up. Season, thank you. Because when you receive the word of God, which you ye heard of us, who the apostles, the disciples, first who called the seventh Jesus Christ, walked the face of the earth, 
and then came the apostle and Jesus Christ that rose from the dead back to the Father. But once again, uh, for this call, we also thank God without season. Ceasing. Ceasing. I, I get that mixed up because I can pronounce it right. Because when you receive the word of God, which you have heard of us, uh, you see it not as a word of man. See what I'm saying? Not as a word of man. They ain't just telling you this. <laughs> God, God came aside. I mean, if uh, Peter told him, if Book of Peter tells that, Book of Acts tells him that, and the Holy by the Holy Ghost. You know, like, uh, uh, that God gave them commandments that you know, like, they were inspired by God as well. And you even see not as the word of man, but as it is truth. What's the truth? The word. The word of God, which effectually working also in you that believe. How the word go? How you for one? How you believe? By the word of God. So that means. If I'm just going to church and getting water baptized only, and that's it, do I believe? No. That's all I'm doing. I'm just going to church. I'm a hearer of the word and not a doer. I'm just getting water baptized and eat. Jesus Christ, you got to believe and be baptized. That means what you believe. Believe. And water baptized, you got to believe the word. And come this this Sunday on uh, Facebook Live. I'm teaching uh, that in Ephesians. But you got to believe and be baptized. What works it up though, I believe? The Word of God. You got to have the Word of God in you to believe. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, do not follow the social media and not teach you the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God for yourself. The church, some of the churches out here are not teaching the word of God. And while the Bible clearly tells you have no fellowship with uh, a fruitful, uh, fruitful work of darkness, the book of Ephesians, have no fellowship because they can pollute your mind to false uh, teaching. Came like that years ago. So I got to the word of God. But false teaching, my mind polluted. So I got to the word of God. You got to stay with the word of God so you know it for yourself. This is eternal life right here. Through the knowledge of God, book, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 through 5. This is the knowledge of God, right? He gives us the knowledge, right? Through the knowledge, uh, God got the knowledge. You know, he gave us everything that pertains to life through the knowledge of him. He saves. Uh, 2 Peter chapter five, 1, 1 through 5. You got to stay in the word of God. If you say you believe, I mean, I got to have the word of God in me to believe. You got to go with Jesus Christ and say, I got to be water baptized. And I got to believe first. And be water, I got to believe. I believe. And be water baptized. I believe Jesus Christ water faith and earth. Yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm immersed through some water. I come up, a new preacher, a new preacher of God, I say the word. So I get, I, so I get that and dwell that spirit inside of me. So I can have eternal life. Don't be deceived by man. Let no man deceive you. Not true to me. Know the word of God for yourself. So you won't be deceived. Like Jesus Christ said, uh, many go be deceived. Many go come in my name and shall deceive many. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. You gotta stay in the word of God so you won't be deceived. Comment to the question before I let you go. If I want to pass uh, my driving test, I mean my permit. Put it like that. I mean, I got to study my permit to pass it. Same thing. I got to study the word of God to make it to the kingdom heaven. New Jerusalem, new earth, and new, new Jerusalem, new earth, and new heaven, new Jerusalem. It's a common sense. Oh, I, I got to make sure I'm studying so I can pass the test. I can pass this test. If I'm not studying, I'm going to pass that test. The word of God is plain. It tells us how we can have eternal life. You got to be in the Word of God to receive it. I love my brothers and sisters out there. Take care of God. Bless. Let's go to prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you, dear Lord, and, and our Lord, save Jesus Christ, our brother. We come to you and say thank you for everything. We thank you for this lesson. We pray that we reach uh, those out there who are hungry and thirsty for the truth. We also pray for those out here who are struggling, those in the Middle East, 
and Ukraine going through a terrible time, you know, may you have them in bad time, best in good time. But we but through your way it tells us it go rain on the just and the unjust. Things must have things gonna have to happen. Like you came and died for all those sin. Things have to happen go like you said, everything is written. Jesus Christ, you said he worked everything in the Bible that is written. It's going to shall be fulfilled. The thing's going to happen. And we don't know the word of God. Trust me, it's me and my wife. We watched the show yesterday. And uh, this girl was baptized. And, and as soon as something bad happened, she just turned away from God. So, Father God, we just, we just want to say for those who are out there, May they stay fast to your word, no matter what. Grow in your way. Get to know you, dear Lord. That's eternal life anyway. Get to know you. So they know what bad thing have they could they could do it better. Not without knowing you. Cause I I was like that because I didn't know how to handle it. So Father God, as I get as I grow and grow your word, I get I get better and better and better and better. More patient, more patient, more patient, Father God, through your way. So I pray for those out there because I love my brothers and sisters and I pray that they come to the knowledge of the truth before everlasting too late. Once again, they don't know it already. For those who don't uh, believe it, don't, don't, and those who don't believe in you, Father God, may they come to you, dear Lord, before everlasting too late as well. May you help us all, Father God, to stay on the right and narrow track, like it says to you, like you tell us in your word, Lord Jesus Christ, our brother. Stay narrow or narrow and right track when it comes to that which is your word. It comes your word. We gotta make sure we are staying on the narrow track and not the broad gate that leads to destruction. Father God, we thank you for everything once again. Pray and grab to those in the household of faith who teach the gospel, dear Lord. May I keep on teaching strictly from your word. I pray, Father God, for those out here who are, who are social media, dear Lord, try to spread your gospel as well. I pray for them, dear Lord, for more patience and more wisdom on your word, Father God. Keep them, dear Lord. Keep up strong, good Lord, where evil comes in our way. And we just thank you, Father God, for everything mm -hmm. that you do for us. You're most divine, holy, almighty, wonderful name, Father God, our brother, Lord Jesus Christ, our brother. Amen. Mm -hmm. Once again, brothers and sisters, stay strong. Never give up on your eternal soul. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.